So I'm about to do the clinch on this steel. The oven is heated to 2050 degrees for this particular magna cut steel. And because of the high temperatures, I only let it heat up, sit there for about 20 minutes. So it's been cooking about 20 minutes. And I'm gonna be clenching between aluminum plates with this particular type of steel. So here we go. Just a few more seconds and the alarm will go off. Actually, I think I set the alarm to go off 10 minutes from now, so never mind. Here we go. And I like to blow compressed air on it. for the air compressor so this has to be treated in a pouch because this type of steel will react with the with oxygen and so you have to have it in an air free environment and so you just wrap it in steel foil like this and you put a piece of paper in it that eats up whatever little oxygen is in there and doing that Wow, that came out really clean, actually. That's just the paper right there that leaves a little bit of uh, ash. Whoops, it's still a bit hot. That's probably about 800 degrees. Let me put this on it and cool it down a bit more. And so the next step, once this gets down to not quite room temperature, it doesn't have to be, but I like to wait till it's room temperature, then we stick it in the liquid nitrogen. And that will hold in liquid nitrogen for about, I like to do between 30 minutes to an hour. And then we stick it in one of these little ovens here. I have some, they're actually enamelin kilns, but I use them for tempering my knives because they get a really good steady temperature. And so you hold it in those for about two hours and you repeat it anywhere between two and four times depending on your preference. I like to do it three, three cycles, um, just to make sure you get all of it converted to the type of, uh, structure you're looking for in the steel. So you drop it from liquid nitrogen temperatures, which is like 77 Kelvin, um, which what's that in Fahrenheit, like minus 296 or something like that. And then you stick it in the oven at 350 degrees and that tempers it, which makes it change its structure to more of the type of structure you're looking for. So, see what this is now. I might be able to touch it. Oh yeah, it's amazing how quickly it can cool down on aluminum. This fine is a little hot. But it shouldn't warp. That's the nice thing about the plate quench. 
when you plunge it in oil, you have more chance of warping, but the plates don't really let it, you know, you're squishing it flat. But this is a real thick steel anyway, so, you know, we're talking about 3 sixteenths or so thickness. It's almost there. I don't know why I'm taking my gloves off. I'm going to need them for the liquid nitrogen. So what's happening is when you quench it in the plates, it's rapidly cooling the steel so quickly that it doesn't have a chance to form the type of steel structure that's bad for a knife. It's called perlite and you don't want it. And if you cool it fast enough, it doesn't have time to form. But then once you get to a certain point, Perlite can no longer form after it's cooler than about a thousand degrees. And then you get down to the point where it starts converting into what's called martensite, which is what we want. And that happens at lower temperatures. In fact, it's happening right now. And so you tend to not want, I don't like to put it in the liquid nitrogen until it's cooled to about room temperature, just to give the martensite more time to form. And then what's going to happen is, is when you put it in the liquid nitrogen, dropping that temperature will give it a chance for even more to convert over into martensite. And then when you stick it in the tempering oven, that causes the structure to change into a different form that's even better. It makes a very strong and tough knife. So let's see. I'd say that's getting pretty close. So let's get liquid nitrogen ready. Now I forgot to measure the width of this knife. I hope it fits. I should have checked this earlier. If it fits in my little thing here. It does, very good. So this just is actually for holding uh, vials for different samples, but I use it for the knives. And so this will cook in here for about, or sit in here for about an hour. And then I'll stick it in the ovens and that's it. So you, you can actually hear it boiling. Because the knife heats it up. That's it.